Isn't God an on-time God? Come on, I know I got two or three saints. Isn't God a faithful God? King David in Psalm 37 says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fail, or though he shall fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. This is my favorite verse. I have been young, and now I am, I am old. But I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. For he is ever merciful, and leadeth, and his seed is blessed. You know what, church? God is a provider. Sometimes you got to look at that old devil and says, my God is more than enough. Like that old song, he can supply my every need. He is my El Shaddai. He's always looking out for me. You have an opportunity today to worship him. Let's take that in Jesus' name.
He's in my hands, he's in my feet. I can hardly keep a seat. My spirit and my soul never grow old. He's in my heart, he's in my mind. My spirit and my soul never grow old. old. He's in my heart, he's in my mind. Sing it together. 
right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I feel like having church tonight. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to have church. You might not have needs, but I got some needs. You might not feel Jesus. I need Jesus today. I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Ghost to move in this house. Anybody else need the Holy Ghost to move? So here's the deal. The band is going to play, and they're going to play in the Holy Ghost. And when they do that, I want the church to respond in the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to get out and dance. Somebody needs to put their hands together. Are you ready, saints? Come on. We're about to have some church in here. I know it's a Tuesday night, but I feel like having church.
praise right now in this house. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody stir up that gift. Hallelujah. 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 God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. He has overcome. burden and covering our shame. He has overcome us. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. I will live. I will
I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Come on, every saint in this house, lift your hands and lift your voice. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Something to break in the Holy Ghost. Something's about to break in the Holy Ghost. Come on, all over this house. Come on, let's not stop here, church. We have a couple needs. We have a couple prayer requests. We want to lift up unto the Lord in this atmosphere. Dr. Adam Chantel, Tanya's old boss, current boss, has a very close friend. They're going to have a heart surgery. His name is Clark. He has heart surgery tonight at 8 p.m. Also, Sister Miraflor, Pastor Miraflor's wife, needs urgent prayer right now. We serve a miracle-working God. We serve a God that can answer prayer. So right now, let's bind together. Let's lift up our voice with boldness and confidence in the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, we pray right now that you would move. entertain his presence in this house. Come on, church, let's thank him for a moment. Let's thank him for his spirit. Let's thank him for what he's about to do. Yes, one more time as you make your way back to your seats. Why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord and give him praise. We're believing you, God, to move upon these situations. We're, we're thanking you right now, God. We're lifting up a praise in advance. Yes, Lord, we're expecting, we're expecting miracles, God. We're expecting praise reports to come out of these prayers that we lifted up unto you tonight. Hallelujah. Is that how you feel, church? Amen. Amen. Well, don't you love what you feel in the house of the Lord tonight? We're believing God for great things. Aren't you glad you came to church tonight? You know, for some reason, Tuesdays seem to be a day that just weighed down on, on me a little more than the rest of the days of the week. But it's, it's when I walk through those doors and they start to play the songs of Zion and we, we begin to praise him and lift up our hands and lift up our voice that all those cares go flying out the window. So grateful to be here tonight. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Some announcements to be mindful of. Today, tonight, after service, the Bible quizzing team is going to be having a fundraiser. Another fundraiser. They're going to be making Mexican corn, and there's going to be drinks available. And there's a tournament this week in Redlands. So that's the reason for this extra push. You know, we're believing God to do great things in our Bible quizzing teams. Amen. So let's go and support them today after church. Also, for all of the youth, youth team, there is a youth meeting today after church as well. You could just head on to the fellowship hall, get some corn, and go to your meeting. Amen. 
All right, this Thursday we have our True Seeker Bible study at 7 p.m. That's going to be at the Casillas home. Saturday we have outreach at 9.30, meeting at Mary's Donuts. Then all church prayer at 6 p.m. Saturday. Sunday we'll be back here with our classes starting at 1 p.m. Our service begins at 2. Also for all the ladies, just a friendly reminder, Esther Conference is coming up real soon. That's April 25th and 26th. That's going to be in Fresno, California, and the registration for each individual is $30. And the age group there, I believe, is 7 or 8 to 18. I'm sorry. 7 or 8 and on. Right. Because uh, we want the, the ones older than 18 to be there as well. Also, for all the, the young little children, junior camp is coming around the corner real quick. That's June 17th through the 21st. And the registration for that is $220 per camper. Well, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hey. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord with God's people. And I sure missed being here Sunday, but I, I got to be here kind of because our time zones were so different. And we had already had church in the morning, and you all cranked it up at 2 o'clock. And, uh, and, and I got to be online with you, and I am telling you, you all evermore had church. I mean, the place was on fire. And... Then Jonathan preached like he was on fire. He was. And I even, I even sent a message, text to the, to the altar uh, music and song selecting team. I said, y'all pick the perfect altar call song for that message. I mean, everybody was just flowing in the Holy Ghost. And that is something that I want to tell you as pastor I'm very thankful for, for a mature church that carries on, has church, has big church, gives glory to God, is, remains a witness to this world, amen, isn't playing games uh, when pastor has to be gone on the Lord's business. Uh, and so uh, I'm, I'm very thankful. And I also want to say thank you to all of the, uh, those that worked, all the men, and if there were any women that worked helping to kind of clean the, the place up, do some yard work and weed eating and and just clearing things up, getting kind of a spring cleaning time. We'll have to do a few more of those, I'm sure. But I, I very much appreciate uh, the sacrifice uh, uh, that was made and all the effort that was put out because, you know, this is, this is God's house. This is where we meet, and we want to make it look as good as we can. Amen. We want it to be as presentable as it can. Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to worship the Lord in our giving right now. And you know, God is a blessor by nature. That is just what he is. It is, it is part of his character to do good things and to be abundant, to bless his people. And how many have found that God indeed is good to you? God been good to you. Why don't you wave your hand? God's been good to me. He's been better than I deserve. And we're going to worship the Lord in our giving. And, uh, and so let's pray together that God will bless this offering, multiply it for his kingdom's sake. And I pray multiply his blessings back to each one of this congregation. Let's pray together. Lord, we are thankful to be in your house we're thankful for your spirit. We're thankful, oh God, that you've called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. And Lord, your blessings that are new every day and your goodness to us. We ask you to receive this offering, these tithes, uh, what all is brought into your storehouse. Bless it, multiply it, uh, and multiply it back to your people. And everybody say in Jesus' name, let's all march as the ushers direct each row.
tried to fight it, but he's still standing. The evangelist is still standing, though the devil tried to knock him down. Praise God. And he's coming to preach to us tonight. This is Brother Jacob Phillips. Most of you young people know him because he has preached to uh, uh, some of our national meetings. We are honored to have you here. Come and take your liberty. While you're clapping your hands, why don't you lift your voice and give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord with me right now. Exalt his name and give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Boy, it feels good in the house tonight, and there's just no telling what God's going to do. I thank God I'm not, but if I was the devil, I'd be putting up a big old block fence right now trying to keep him, trying to keep this church out of going into his territory and taking everything that he's stolen, then some. Hallelujah. I, you know, I, I understand the concept. We want everything back. Well, I'm going to just tell you, the devil's got some stuff that I never had that I want too. You think when David went back and the Amalekites came from Ziklag and he, they took everything from him, you think he just went back and got what was his? Mm-mm. No, the Bible talks about no, man's, uh, no man will spoil a strong man's house unless he first binds the strong man. We get so caught up on preaching about and singing about and shouting about binding the strong man that we forget it's not about binding him. It's about the spoil that he's got. And I'm just telling you, there's some spoil of war that I believe somebody's going to go and get. And you're going to leave here tonight walking in victory, walking in deliverance, walking in dominion and authority. Woo! Hey, Amen. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. While you're turning there, let me say what an honor and a privilege it is to be with you here today. I love and appreciate your pastor. We have known each other for, from a distance for quite uh, some time. My wife, she's mean to me sometimes, and she tells me that I'm intimidating. I'm like, I don't know why I'm intimidating. I'm a I'm big old teddy bear. I might bite you, but but uh, when you walk in the presence of the good pastor of this church, you know you came into the presence of a man, and that's the kind of man I like being around. <laughs> man, man, and it is obvious that there is somebody here that is standing in this pulpit and preaching the word and pushing this church to the next dimension. Amen. I promise tonight not to preach too long, but I am going to preach long enough to get uh, what I feel like God's given me across. It may take me a minute or two to go to get going tonight, and I apologize for that. Uh, I'm suffering with a bout of uh, food poisoning, uh, but God's still good, and he's still on the throne, and, and we're just going to keep on having church, and God's going to be on the throne tomorrow, and then God's going to be on the throne the next day, so I'm not worried about all that. 
Amen. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 1. Now there was a certain man of Ramathium Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Seth, an Ephrathite. And he had two wives for the, for the love of God. I can't figure out why he did, but he did. I can't keep up with the one I got. Love her heart. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And I want you to pay close attention to this, and I really hope we get to deal with this tonight. If we do, it'll be fun. If not, uh, maybe if I do good enough, maybe pastor will let me come back at a later time and deal with it. But it makes special mention that the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there as well. The priests of the Lord, they were there. The Bible says in verse 4, when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and all of her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah, I want you to get this, unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. The devil didn't do it. The government didn't do it. God did it. God shut up her womb. I want to preach to us tonight for the next few moments with your help and the help of the Lord about the journey from barren to blessed. The journey from barren to blessed. Would you help me right now one more time by lifting your hands to heaven? And while you've got your hands in the air, why don't you lift your voice? Just begin to ask the Lord that he would help us. God, we need you. We want you. We can't do anything without you. We're asking you, Lord, to have your way in this house. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost destroy every yoke. God, I'm asking you that tonight somebody would leave here with a new mindset. They're not staying in barrenness forever, but they're going to a place of blessing. They're going to a place they've never been before. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Would you clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph one more time. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated if you're going to help me preach tonight. If you're not going to help me, you can just keep standing or you can be dismissed. Either one doesn't matter to me. One thing that I would like to point out, and we will revisit this two or three times throughout what I feel like God has given me tonight, is as we read this story, that we begin to read about this woman, Hannah. We have to understand that Hannah is not the first person in Scripture that is connected to the word barren. We understand she is the fifth woman and she is the fourth woman given an identity. We know of Sarah, we know of Rebecca, and we know of Rachel. There is one other woman, again, I think she is unnamed throughout Scripture. Uh, but then we have Hannah. So suffice it to say, Hannah is the fourth woman that is identified in Scripture that is connected to barrenness. Now, this woman, Hannah, most of us tonight know the story is married to a man by the name of Elkanah. And what we can find in study of Scripture is that Elkanah was a man of great power, man of great stature. And so it was a cultural thing in this day, in this hour, that a man uh, of his stature, some even say that he would be likened unto what we would call a mayor or a governor, in his province, and so it would only make sense because of the cultural implications of this day that, that Elkanah would have many children. Now, it's not just a cultural thing, but the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, chapter 127, I believe it is, that children are an inheritance from the Lord. And so, as we understand that, we find that this man, Elkanah, has a wife by the name of Hannah, and a wife by the name of Penina. And Hannah has no children, and Penina is, has children. Now, I, I don't want to take the time to read it tonight. I will give you some homework, though. You can go home 
and read it for yourself as we go through the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1 is that it is evident that Penina would torment Hannah hailing insults at her and promoting herself because she was productive. Everyone say productive. But what Penina didn't understand is that while Elkanah came to her for children, he went to Hannah for company. And what Penina didn't get is why she was productive, Hannah was preferred. Can I just take a moment and park right here and tell somebody, I'd rather be preferred than productive any day of the week. What are you trying to tell me? I'm telling you tonight that the favor of God is bigger than every shortcoming that you have in your productivity. That the favor of God is bigger than anything that you can't do on your own. You might not be qualified for the job. You might not be qualified for the position. You might not have enough money or enough smarts. But can I tell you that when you walk in the favor of God, it doesn't matter if you're productive or you're not because God knows how to get greatness out of the gutters. God knows how to find people that are in the midst of mess, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of struggle and trial and tribulation and elevate them to a place where they're not only productive third but then they're productive too I'm just here to tell somebody today uh, that the enemy's been sitting on your shoulders uh, and telling you you'll never accomplish anything for God uh, that you are still uh, preferred uh, don't you let the devil convince you uh, that you need to sit on your pew uh, and fold your hands uh, and quit church uh, because you're not productive uh, you're going to get productive one day baby uh, just walk in your preferred season uh, walk in the season in a favor. Walk in the season where God has his hand on your life. Hallelujah. Why is this important? I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, but we'll reverse engineer it as we go tonight. Why is this important? It's important because you have to understand that there was something inside of Hannah that decided to just be happy being preferred. She just she just kept going to church, Pastor Bertram. There was nothing that could stop her getting in the presence of the Lord and when you have that attitude and we're going to preach about it tonight uh, but when you have that attitude uh, there's not a devil in hell and out of hell uh, that can stop you from walking from preferred uh, to productive uh, there's not a devil in hell or out of hell uh, that can stop you from walking from favor uh, to the ultimatum of being blessed <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah Again, it is evident as we read scripture that she had someone in her life that would not relent, that kept on telling her, you're not productive. You're not what Elkanah wants you to be. Don't you wish you were like me, Hannah? Don't you wish you had children like me? Can I just tell somebody something tonight? Just keep doing what makes God happy. We got so many people that worry about what other people are thinking and what other people are saying that we forget that they didn't die for us. They didn't shed their blood. They didn't go to a hill called Calvary. They didn't stretch their arms wide and let them put nails through their hands and nails through their feet. I'm going to tell you, the truth of the matter is, the closer you get to blessing, the more haters are going to attach themselves to you. But Somebody needs to have an attitude in here tonight uh, that said, I will not let my haters stop my hallelujah. I will not let my haters stop me from having hope. Uh, I will not let the fakers uh, stop me from having faith. Uh, you can laugh at me. Uh, you can mock me. Uh, you can make fun of me. Uh, but I'm going to show right back up on Sunday morning. Uh, and I'm going to have a praise on my lips. Uh, I'm going to show right back up on Sunday morning. Uh, I might be barren, uh, but I'm working towards the blessing. Hallelujah. What makes, again, what makes this so ironic is that Hannah is not the first person that has ever been here. Woo. I feel like I might hurt somebody's feelings right here. But you're not the first person that's ever been depressed. I, I, I know you come to church with a chip on your shoulder. I, listen, I don't know none of y'all, and so this, if, if this hits you between the eyes, if the shoe fits, wear it. But we got a lot of people that come to church with the attitude, Sister Bertram, that I'm the only one. No, no 
Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows how long I've pressed. Nobody knows how much trouble's going on in my family. No, no, there ain't nobody ever had to deal with being broke like me. You know, in, in reality, I can see myself in the life of David sometimes, and I, I know David's a Bible character that we heroize, I, but, but i just be honest. I don't like David as a person. I like him as a Bible character, but I don't like him as a person. He's always taking other folks' wives, <laughs> fighting people. David kind of has this attitude consistently that I'm the only one. Nobody has problems like David has problems, but nobody has victories like I got them either. Matter of fact, when you start reading about David, and we're going to talk more about David here in a little bit tonight, David, if David was alive in 2024, David would be on medication. Nobody knows how bad I got it. Listen, I know I'm trying to make it a little comical, but the truth of the matter is is some of you have looked yourself in the mirror and you felt so sorry for yourself because of what's going on, but I'm just here to tell you tonight, you're not the first person that's ever had to deal with chaos. You're not the first person that ever had to show up at church and your world come crashing in. You're not the first person. So we, we, we got to back up. We got to rewind. We got to find out what, what is God doing through the story of Hannah. And, and, and so we know that Hannah's not the first person that's ever dealt with, with barrenness. The first person that we can talk about in Scripture that is dealing with barrenness is a woman by the name of Sarah. And, and again, I, I don't think we really understand because in our westernized ideas, it, it was a cultural problem if you were barren. It, 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 it was a uh, an issue that people assumed uh, that you had played the harlot and it was the curse of God. So imagine the shame that you got to deal with because of barrenness. Imagine the guilt that maybe you didn't even do anything wrong, but everybody's looking at you and assuming that you were, were a lady that had no business being married to a man like Abraham. Sarah, when she is barren, here's the issue. She tries to get around the will of God by letting Abraham have a son with her handmaiden. She tries to get around the process. Everybody say the process. She tries to get around the process by trying to have a baby through somebody else's womb. But can I tell you tonight that as long as you try to have the miracle through somebody else's life, when the miracle finally gets there, it's not going to have your DNA in it. And the miracle you've been praying for, it's not going to look like you. It's not going to walk like you. It's not going to talk like you. And you can look at Ishmael and you'll despise Ishmael because it was your idea. But the problem was it wasn't God's idea. And so because you keep coming to church and trying to work it out. Oh, I thought y'all, I know y'all thought I was just going to come and pat you on the back. But I, I'm trying to help somebody right now to understand that you can't get involved with an Ishmael revival when God is trying to give you an Isaac revival. You can't keep trying to make it happen the way you want it to happen. Well, God, you got to work within these perimeters. You got to do it this way or you got to do it that way. Let me tell you something. Mind your own business. Uh, get your nose out of God's business uh, and let God be God. Uh, let God do what God's going to do. Uh, stop trying to have the miracle through somebody else. Uh, that's your ministry. Uh, that's your breakthrough. Uh, that's your blessing. Uh, that's your anointing. Uh, and I'm not going to let Hagar have uh, what God told me I can have. Hallelujah. If you keep trying to, if you keep trying to have the miracle through somebody else's world and with your own thoughts and your own ideas, you're never going to experience Isaac, which means laughter and joy. You want to be happy? Stop comparing yourself to everybody else in the church. I'm sorry, I'm just a redneck from Mississippi. I don't know how else to say it than mind your own business. Just let God do what God's going to do through you. Listen, if you're not careful, you'll come to church and you'll compare yourself to where everybody else is. And you'll say, well, they're blessed in a way that I'm not blessed in. But what you don't know is that God sees the end from the beginning. Uh, and if you just keep on holding to the unchanging hand of God, uh, God's going to bring you and elevate you uh, to the same 
place are even greater than who you're comparing yourself with. This, well, yeah, and I don't have time to preach about Rachel and, and all of these other things, but Sarah, Sarah gets the handmaiden involved. Rachel gets the handmaiden involved. But Rachel, uh, let, let, let me just say this. Rachel, if you keep trying to have the miracle through somebody else, there's never going to be a Joseph. And then who's going to deliver God's people? Well, I don't like the process. I'm sure Rachel didn't either. But what was going to happen to God's people when the famine came if she didn't go through the process? That's what makes Hannah so different than Sarah, than Rachel, under the pressure of having children, being the laughing stock of that day. And you know, truth is, we saved, but we ain't real saved. It's all right to be honest. Let somebody mess up. <laughs> let, let, let somebody ha make a mistake, and we'll talk about it. We do. I, I wish we lived in a world where we didn't, and, and I'm working on myself. Ye with your spiritual, restore some to one in the spirit of meekness. I'm working on that. I'm trying to be better about that. I don't, I don't want to talk about people and run people down. But it's human nature to talk about folks when they've made a mistake. Can you imagine going to church with Hannah? And again, given the implications culturally that I told you about a few moments ago, what it was like to walk down the aisle of church. Sister Sally Sue has been in the church for 75 years, who knows everybody's business, just started looking down her nose, shaking her head. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but Hannah just kept going to church. Hannah just kept taking her offering to the altar. The song leader would get up. I don't know what it was like to be have church in that day and time. But the song leader would get up and start singing about the faithfulness of God. And Hannah would raise her hands even though she feels like God ain't been faithful. See, I, I'm, I'm just giving you a simple tool tonight. And I know sometimes we try to make it so difficult. It really ain't that hard. Just keep coming to church. Just keep praising. Just keep praying. Just keep believing God. Just keep worshiping. Listen, we don't have to make it harder than it is. If you just keep on showing up, God will keep on showing up. If you keep on doing what you're supposed to do, God will keep doing what. Hey, I'm here to tell somebody tonight, you're making another step in the journey because you're making up in your mind right now. I'm the devil. I'm not quitting. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm coming back to church, and I'm coming back with a praise. I'm coming back to church with my hands lifted. High. This is this is the part of this we don't like. Hannah went to church, and Panina went to church with her. Woo. I don't know who started that false doctrine that once you get the Holy Ghost, all your problems disappear. But I would love to wrap my left hand around their tie and extend the right hand to fellowship. I, I don't know who started that mess, but Hannah went to church and her problem went to church with her. See, here, here's, here's where some of us are living right now because we've been, we've been faithful. But it seems like now Panina sitting on the pew right next to it. Don't look at your husband, your wife. That ain't the problem. I can't even get a word from God because Penina's right here bumping them jaws. Don't you wish you had children like me? Don't you wish you were blessed like me? Hannah's trying to pray at prayer meeting, and Penina went to prayer meeting. Hannah's going to the altar with a lamb, and Penina's right there beside her with a lamb. Don't you wish you had children, Hannah? And I can just imagine Hannah kind of getting a little attitude like some of us sisters will do sometimes. I know, I know, I know you saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, but some of our sisters in the church, they'll, they'll come to church with a little attitude. Woman, let me tell you something. You know what? I wish to God you'd get that kind of attitude with the devil. 
Somebody will mess, and this men, women alike, somebody will mess with your kids and you'll go off. Put your Holy Ghost down and say, I'll pick it up on the way out the door. I wish to God you'd get that kind of spirit with the devil and say, devil, I'd rather be chosen and childless than fruitful and forgotten. If I don't have a child, God's in control of that. If I don't have a blessing, God's in control of that. But I'm not going to stop coming to church. I'm trying to help somebody. Y'all sit down. Y'all keep doing that. I'll preach all night. Hannah never stopped doing what was right. Now, here's the thing. This is where the devil will jump on our shoulders and say, yeah, but you're letting your emotions get all in the way. But in 13 verses, listen to this. In just 13 verses, listen to the emotions that Hannah has to deal with. She was provoked. She wept. She didn't eat. She had sorrow. She was grieved. She was bitter. She was afflicted and accused in 13 verses. One church service. She came to God and was provoked. And she wept. And she couldn't eat. And she was sorrowful. And she was grieving. And she was bitter. And she was afflicted. And then if that ain't it all, well, let, let, I, I, I was hoping I'd get to it. Here we go. Bible, again, it makes, it makes special mention that Hophni and Phinehas are there. Now, you know who Hophni and Phinehas' dad is? It's Eli. Eli comes to church and sees her in the front acting like a fool and says, You're, woman, why are you drunk? What's wrong with you? Why are you acting like that? I, I will present to you tonight that Eli had done let the water get a little muddled and he couldn't tell what was of God and what was not. Watch this. You ready for this? God gives her a promise of a son. And she says, if you give me that son, I'm going to bring him right back to the house of God. Well, guess who's going to raise Samuel? Eli. Eli failed as a father. And the, and the maternal instinct should be, I'm not taking him to him. You don't think Hophni and Phinehas, you don't think everything they've been doing done spread through the whole country? But let a banker have an, an adulterous case. And, and nobody talks about it, but let it happen to a preacher. That's what they were doing. You think I'm taking that out of context? I, 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 just, I just see this. She knew what these men had done. I even wondered, this is just my little Sunday school brain. Y'all had to bear with me. I was held back in the primary class. I've had a long time to think about this stuff. But I even wondered, maybe Hopna and Phineas made a pass at her. Hey, good looking. She had to bring Samuel back to Eli, knowing that Eli had failed as a father. And this is where we'll be. In the house of God, God will give us a promise and we'll tell God, I'll do this. But then we'll start looking around at the church and say, well, God, I would have, but they did that. Ooh, I'm in somebody's corn patch right now. I just feel like messing around a little bit here. Well, if I hadn't been hurt by the last preacher, I'd pay my tithe. If I hadn't been hurt by the, the last preacher, I'd come to church faithful. Hannah had every maternal right to say, I'm not taking Samuel back to that church. Eli failed as a father, but Hannah was spiritual enough to know, I'm not giving him to Eli. I'm giving him to God. And if I'll give him to God, God will take care of him. If I'll give it, if I'll give it to God, God will elevate him. If I, I know I'm preaching to somebody tonight that came in and you're struggling because God wants to bless you and he's challenging you and you're wondering, what do I do? I'll tell you what to do. Bring it to the church. Bring your promise to the church and leave it at the church. Well, what happens 
What happens when Samuel gets messed up? That's God's problem. What happens when Samuel gets twisted like Hop 9 Phineas? Uh, that's God's problem. What happens when I bring my kids to church uh, and I put them in Sunday school and they get their feelings hurt uh, and then they're bitter? You know what you need to do? Uh, you need to take them home uh, and teach them. Uh, we're going back to church. Uh, we're not going to get bitter. We're not going to get angry. We're not going to get upset. We're just going to keep going back to church. Consistency means something to God. Hannah, I'm going to give you a baby. I'm going to give him right back. This is what makes Hannah's story so different than everybody else. Than everybody else that's been dealing with barrenness. She just keeps going to church. And watch. Watch what happens. When Sarah has a baby, Pastor Bertram, you know how many she has? One. When Rachel, who tries to get around God, has children, you know how many she has? Two. But we know of at least five more. God help me, Jesus. That Hannah has as a result of just keeping to go to church. So what are you trying to tell me? You may not be the first person that's ever been through what you're going through right now. But if you'll go through it with the right attitude, you'll come out of it with a blessing like nobody else has ever had. I'm going to say it again. You're not the first person to be depressed. But if you'll go through the depression with a praise on your lips, you're going to come out of the depression with a blessing like nobody else has ever had that's been depressed. You're not the first person to deal with fear and anxiety. But if you go through the fear and the anxiety with your hands in the air and a shout in your feet, when you come out, you're going to come out with a blessing like you're not the first person that's ever been broke, but I kept on giving, and I kept on praising, and I kept on believing, and I started taking a journey. I started walking out of barrenness towards the blessing. See, here's the reason. Woo! Here's the reason a lot of people don't make it. Ah. I'm only 32 years old, and there's a lot I don't know. But I do know a little bit. I started preaching when I was nine years old. And in 20 years of ministry, I've learned a thing or two. And I have learned in watching people. Can I tell off on you, Pastor? Pastor can sit right there in that chair and watch you walk through that door right there. And he can tell how you're going to respond by the way you walk through that door. Sometimes we work in the prophetic, and sometimes we work in the obvious. You've had a bad day. Oh, pastor, I needed a word for God. It's so good. you know. Oh, we just looked at you. You look like you've been sucking on a dill pickle all week. This is the problem. We got a lot of people that will come to church, and their response is dictated by stuff. We got a lot of people not in a relationship with God. They're in a relationship with God's stuff. And so as long as I got the stuff, I can shout. Woo, help me, Jesus. As long as I got joy, I can leap. As long as I got peace, I can run the aisles. As long as I got a little money in my pocket. Let me tell you something. If that's you, you need to grow up. You need to stop being a, such an immature Christian and realize that sometimes we walk through barren seasons, but the way you walk through your barren season will decide how you get to live in your blessed season. Why am I trying to go through this with the right attitude? Because I know when I get to my blessed season, God's going to pour out a blessing that I cannot even contain because I learned how to live for God through the barrenness. I made up my mind a long time ago. God, I'm thankful for your stuff. But if you never give me any more stuff, God help me to keep my word. I'm coming to church 
and I'm lifting my hands and I'm putting a praise on my lips and bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Sometimes my soul don't feel like blessing the Lord. Sometimes my soul don't feel like shouting. But I'm going to take dominion over my flesh. Flesh, bless the Lord in the barrenness. Flesh, bless the Lord in the depression. Flesh, bless the Lord in all the problems. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I love y'all. I love preaching in this church. This is a, this church will help you preach. I love y'all, but I didn't want to be here tonight. About 3 30, I was laying in the bed. And Brother Wilma told me, he said, I'm I'm sure Brother Burton will understand. I was like, yeah, but I got a word burning on the inside. And I don't, I didn't want to be here. But sometimes. I came into this church. I'm not, I'm not bragging on me. I'm just telling you how you have to do it. I came in here and sat down by a pastor. I didn't feel like jumping. <laughs> My stomach's cramping so bad today. Even right now it's cramping. But let me just tell you something. I'm not going to let what the enemy's doing. I'm not going to. Listen, sometimes it's not even the enemy because the Bible says that the Lord had shut up her womb. We put so much stuff on him. God help me. I'm trying to stop. I promise. I'm trying to quit. We put so much stuff on the devil that the devil ain't got nothing to do with. Have you considered my servant Job? That was God's idea. That's what the problem is. We come to church and then we start playing the blame game with God. God, if you just move this out of the way, let me tell you what God's doing. God is looking to see how we respond to barrenness. Because if you can't live for him in barrenness, you won't ever get to live for him in blessing. I'm just going to tell you, I found out living for God. If you show God the only place you can live for him is the valley and you can't handle a mountaintop, God will never let you experience a mountaintop experience. And you will have to live the rest of your life in the valley. I got it, God. I know I'm hard-headed. Sometimes I don't get it on the first time through. But God help me. God help me to come to church in the barren season and give God praise. I'm going to help somebody tonight. I'm trying to close. Musicians, come. This means absolutely nothing. I'll tell you what the will of God is for your life. The apostle told us, in all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God, Christ Jesus, concerning you. Now stop praying for the will of God and do the will of God. I don't want to move until I hear from the, I, until I hear from the Lord. Listen, when God's not talking, you just need to be like Hannah and just show back up in all things. Uh, give thanks uh, for this is the will of God. I, I, I don't understand what I'm going through, uh, but I'm coming to church and I'm gonna give God thanks. Uh, I don't I don't understand how this is working out, but I come to church uh, and I'm giving God thanks. Watch this. Watch this. I promise. I'm closing. I'm entitled to three closings. This is my second. Hannah, with the spirit of thanksgiving. You know that's one of the signs of the end time? Men would be unthankful. Yeah. Right. Hannah said, I'm just, I'm just glad to be at church. Yeah, yeah I, I got every reason in the world to backslide, I'm the, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Did you know that little old Hannah Changed the entire dynamics of the rest of the Bible. Hannah, I don't believe that. Let me give you Bible for it. Hannah has a son. His name is Samuel. Samuel anoints a knucklehead king over Israel. He starts messing up. God says, take you a horn of oil and go down to Jesse's house and anoint the next king of Israel. He walks into Jesse's house. He sees Eliab and he said, surely the hand of the Lord is upon him. He's tall like a king ought to be tall. He's good looking. He's got pretty teeth. He's productive. And 
you know what God says? Man looks on the outside. God help me, Jesus. But I look upon the heart. You know what that is? That's the story of Hannah and Penina playing out in the life of David. And, and, and so Samuel, I, I wonder if Samuel started thinking about all the stories that his mama had told him when she came to visit him once a year and brought him a coat and said, I remember when I didn't have anything. I remember when I was broken and barren, but I kept on giving God prayer. I wonder if right there the spirit of Hannah came on Samuel. Because you read your Bible, she don't check up for none of the rest of the brothers. He don't check up for one of them. He walks past the, that ain't him, that ain't him, that ain't him, that ain't him. Jesse, don't you got one more? Yeah, I, I got one more. But he's kind of ruddy. And he ain't worth much. But all he's worth is watching sheep. Go fetch him. Woo. He ain't. He ain't productive now, but he's preferred. He don't look like a king yet. He don't walk like a king yet. He don't even think like a king yet, but he thinks like a shepherd. And a shepherd knows how to lead sheep. And if a shepherd can lead sheep, then a shepherd can lead a kingdom. David, I'm gonna take what I put inside of you and I'm gonna I'm gonna elevate you. Listen, I'm gonna mess with your theology. This is my third close, and I might have to borrow one from the next time I'm gonna be here. David gets in the streets and starts dancing. Woo! It's hallelujah time. The presence of the Lord is coming back to the city of David. And I know, I know we preached it, but in my opinion, we preached it wrong that Michael looked down out of her window and saw David shouting and despised him because he was a worshiper. But if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 20, well, in this story, where, where she looks down from her high horse, if you let me just put it like that, she looks over her high horse, and the Bible says, and she despised David in her heart. She hated him. But go to 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 20. You know what the Bible says, Sister Bertram? That Michael loved David. Watch this. You know what is recorded in, in that chapter? David driving out spirits from Saul. Now, I don't know if you know this or not. But you can't drive out evil spirits with old time rock and roll. David, Brother Bertram, I know you're from the, the area I'm from, or you spent some time there anyway in, in the south. But, but, but David didn't drive those evil spirits out listening to Led Zeppelin or Leonard Skinner, any of them guys. He, wouldn't, he was playing the song, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, woo, they was playing songs of worship. And that moment, he walks out, the evil spirits are gone. And Michael looked at David, and the Bible said, and she loved David. Let me tell you something. Michael knew David was a worshiper when she married him. This didn't catch Michael by surprise. He said, well, you're messing with my theology. Well, let me finish. You know what Michael said when she started talking? Oh, how glorious was the king. Who uncovered himself? See, it wasn't the worship that stopped her from loving David. She knew he was a worshiper when she married him. It was the fact that he disconnected himself for everything that identified him as a king. She needed stuff to shout. She needed a blessing before she could dance. Oh, how glory. She was saying, David, where's your robe? David, where's your crown? David, where's all the fine jewels that identify you as the king? And, and, and she starts looking at David and running David down because David has disconnected himself from everything that has identified him as a king. And David looked 
back at her and said, woman, it was before the Lord God that chose me before he chose your daddy. You know what he was saying? I remember what it was like to be buried. I remember what it was like for nobody to know who I was. I telling you in the Holy Ghost, I didn't even know, I don't know y'all's situation, I didn't know it until I pulled up here and pastor gave me about a 45 second, let me know what was going on. But you want to know how you're going to get out of this building into one that you can grow to a thousand in? Be like David, I'm in the valley and I've had everything stripped from me, I've had it, I've had everything taken, but blessed be the name of the and I will be more foul than Dutch baby if you think I shouted today you just wait till tomorrow because I don't need the stuff to shout I got a God that's worthy of my praise even in the barrenness And the Bible says that Michael was barren. It's revival in reverse. Michael was barren from that day forward. Why? Because you can't produce children after trying to mix pride and praise together. I need the stuff. I come to challenge somebody tonight to give God about 60 seconds of your best praise over nothing. I'm in the storm. I'm in the rain. I'm in the heartache. But blessed be the name above every other name. Blessed be the name of the Till the battle is over
first person to go through it. But at the spirit of Hannah, I will bless the Lord.
you, brother. Phillips. For just living out what you preach. <laughs> you go to church anyway. He preached his guts out not feeling good. That makes me want to make sure I don't stay home just because I got a little headache or a little hangnail or, and I want to come to church because I want to tell you that the power of God is going to move. God is going to show himself faithful. Thank you for that great word of God. Let's give a hand clap of praise to the Lord. Such a powerful move of the Holy Ghost and our children. I'm going to tell you, there were breakthroughs tonight. Breakthroughs. Another generation. Another generation. Learning how to take it to the next dimension. Amen. Shake hands and be friendly. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.